We just were, we were just talking about the hostages situation. Terrible. I wouldn't like to be the person to make a decision. No, this, is, this is a terrible, terrible thing. I, in one when one way there is there is a, a law for pigeon swim. That the people that uh, yes. the Gemara says, and so the Rambam, that people must not be, how do you say, um, intimidated. Yeah, not only intimidated, but in, in not, the sauce. Not, 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 not to use the uh, to, to give in. In order to, of course, redeem Shvuim, redeem those that were in prison is a big mitzvah. But the question is, how far must you capitulate to the demands of the people that say, we want, there used to be, I mean, Shvuim, of course, wasn't the way that we see today. But wherever were Jews, always were situation that would help a Jew in order to get money. And uh, the question is, how long or how far you should capit be capitulated and, and in order to redeem the prisoner, must you pay money, unbelievable money, because it's a mitzvah? Or you must also think if you are not encouraging people to do that, to uh, help Jews, because you know you get a lot of money. So there is such a kind of a consideration that you have to think not for the moment. Obviously, it is a very, very emotional, especially for the families. God forbid if you should be in under such uh, circumstances. But there is not so simple. One second. <coughs> Hello? אני עכשיו מתחיל זום. לא, לא, שמונה וחצי. איפה אתה בבית? אתה בבית תהיה בלילה? אוקיי. You have, to, on one end, there is a lot of emotion involved, especially the families, and they're putting a lot of pressure, obviously, on those that are making the decision. On the other end, you have to be strong to make the right decision. I would not like to be in that place. It's a terrible situation. It is. It is. Especially the experience showed because there before a situation like that that Israel paid uh, with exchange of prisoners and so on with the where promises you cannot trust this cholera. I don't know what I can say. You need Moshiach. Sorry? We need Moshiach. Moshiach, yeah, we need Moshiach. Yeah. Did you speak to Lawrence? I said to Lawrence, we're waiting for Moshiach. He says, his philosophy is Moshiach came, he had one look and he ran away. Yeah. Anyhow, look what we have. It's up to us. Obviously, 
if Mashiach is not here, it's a sign that we still don't deserve him. Because it's very fascinating. It is, because he says, and Mashiach Ba, only Dor Zakai or Dor Chayav. Mashiach can be, be in two possibilities. Either when the generation will be so high they deserve the, the credits, or Mashiach comes when things are so bad that there is a danger that the nation is going to be wiped off, then Mashiach also would appear. Obviously, we don't want to be in a situation that Mashiach should come when we be in such a danger that Israel is going to be wiped off. So we must only improve our, our, our uh, situation to deserve him that he should come. What can I say? That's a, a terrible, terrible situation. Okay, in the meantime, we have to learn and obviously, every time, everything that we do, a good thing, if we learn, we daven, whatever, should be to the credit of those who were kidnapped, that they should be released. And we have to pray that whatever the decision would be, or we would make by, by our people, should be the right one. And it shouldn't be something that afterwards everybody will regret, like there are certain times the decision was made and was regretful. This is what I can say. So, we did learn last week, which almost we finished, I just want to uh, to make a short, a short uh, mentioning of what we learned. We learned last week about. We see the Mishnah many times, and we'll see it to this Mishnah today, putting two personalities. From, from the worst to the best. And last week, we put Moshe Rabbeinu against Yerobam ben Avat. Moshe Rabbeinu, he was the one that made a lot of things for the sake and for the benefit of the Jews. And if a person is uh, causing a multitude uh, to, to be meritorious, no sin shall come through him. This is what the mission said. And this is Moshe Rabbeinu. On the other end, the other opposite, if somebody brings a multitude to sin, will not be given the means to achieve repentance. And this was Yeravam ben Avad, that he not only himself a sinner or sin, but he caused others to sin. And this is, as I said, the way how the Mishnah puts two examples of people, one extreme good, one extreme bad. If a person 
cause, like Moshe Rabbeinu, cause the other to do things. First of all, he himself must be um, a perfect person. If he does manage to, keep, to cause others, then he shows he himself is 100%. And, and we saw if the person does cause others to do good things, he gets the credit of the deeds of the other people as well. This was Moshe Rabbein. On the other hand, Yerobam ben Nevat, he caused other to sin. So the sins of the other people, again, they become also considered and are being added to his own sin. And therefore the Mishnah says, he will not have the opportunity to do tshuva. Doesn't mean to say that he will not, but every person, even every, although that a person got freedom of choice, he needs some uh, wish or desire to do tshuva. And if a person is in such terrible luck, like he doesn't get the support from heaven to do tshuva, and mispikim be adol tshuva. He won't be able to get to the point to do tshuva. And uh, yeah, so it it uh, puts. Uh, what, what does the Mishnah gives us all this? It's not uh, a historical record. It is obviously the old Mishnah Yot Perkei Avod are supposed to give us the lessons, teaching, to, to, to learn from these personalities what to do and what not to do. So the Mishnah like tells us, try to do good deeds, good things, and see to influence and cause others to do. And this is Moshe Rabbeinu. On the other hand, refrain not only when you sin, worse that if you are a sinner, that you also caused others to sin. And this can be in different ways, like Yerobam ben Avad, what was wrong? He puts an idol uh, and stop people to go to the temple. And uh, it, it became a, a, an example of a wicked person. So we must make sure that we are not going to fall into kind of a trap that in our behavior we can cause others to do the wrong things or to sin. And uh, obviously we should be trying to be an example that people want to, um, what do you say, copy us to do good things and God forbid not to uh, show an example how to do bad things. And this is really was uh, the lesson of that Mishnah. Now we continue to Mishnah 19 or Brothers 22. Again, we are talking about two extremes. As you will see in a moment, the Mishnah says, Kol mi sheyesh ba shlashat dvarim alalu 
ומתלמידיו של אברהם אבינו. Whether as within, within him these three qualities, he is of the disciples of Avraham our father. But if he has three other qualities, in other words, he does not have these positive things, other things he can be considered of the disciples of the wicked Bilam. Now, what are the three qualities that the Mishnah is trying to teach us? Ein Tova, a good eye. Obviously, what is a good eye? Not that the person can see well. It is metaphoric. We should see in a moment. Ruach <clears throat> Nemucha. Humble temperature, a uh, temperament. Nefesh Shvela, lowly spirit. In, in, in principle, means to be, do good things and to be humble, not to be haughty. מתלמידיו של אברהם אבינו. This is what we see, the characteristics of Avram, we will see in a moment, where do we see it. However, what is the things that we saw in Bilam? Ein Ra, evil eye, a haughty temperament, and in set and set it and set the able set the able spirit which means uh somebody okay we we'll see what this is bilam the wicked now he, the mission comes to say what are the winds between those that follow Abraham to those that uh, the punishment for those that follow Bila. What difference is, lies between disciples of Abraham, our father, and those of Bila, the wicked? The disciples of Abraham eat or enjoy the fruit of their virtue in this world and inherit the world to come. For it is stated, there is inheritance enough to bestow upon my friends and their treasuries will I feel. So in other words, it should be a reward for following the ways of Abraham, getting a reward in this world, and in the world to come. But Tamidav Shel Bilam Arasha, the disciples of Bilam, the wicked, inherit Genom. And descend, descend into the pit of destruction. For it is stated, uh, a new God will bring them down into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and deceit shall not live out of their days, but I will trust in you. I will trust in you. So what are these uh, good qualities and where do we see it? in Avram, so we said the first words, Ein Tova. What is Ein Tova? A person is God, is generous, he does like to do goods, he can forgive 
others, he encouraged others to do good. And to what? As it says, just a minute, as it says, Uh, as I said, he's a generous. Sameach bechelko. A person is happy in his shell, and he is satisfied in what he has. He doesn't uh, want or. Uh, jealous of others that he has what more. Where do we see Avram generosity? He went to save Lot when he uh, was uh, Lot was captured when was a war in the area there between four and the five uh, um, countries and he was captured and uh, uh, Abraham went to save him but not only that the king of Sdom as a matter of appreciation and gratitude wanted him to take things from the uh, assets that he managed to save for them. And Abraham said, I won't take even a shutai, shulais. I won't take. We had an opportunity to get, no, he's happy in what he has. Also, we see Avram, uh, he was Machnis Orchim, uh, he was a host, a host to strangers. The whole story which we read uh, two weeks ago, the Malachim, when the, the angels came, of course, Abraham didn't know they are angels. They came like human beings. The way I treated them, I was trying to do everything for them. This Abraham. The second quality is humbleness. Ruach Nemucha. He's humble. When he was pleading, um, for Sdom that Hashem should not destroy, he kept apologizing. Anochi afar ve'efer. He like said, I'm nothing. I'm just like dust. I'm like uh, uh, sand. I'm nothing. He, he didn't keep himself. The, I'm a great man, I am the one that I brought uh, the belief in God. He kept himself with humility. And Nefesh Vela, he didn't have any um, lust for and uh, physical things. So this is Avram, where the Mishnah points out three qualities, obviously. He had, well, he had other qualities, but there are the three that are standing out for us to, to learn and to appreciate. I, before I continue to go about Bilam, there is a very interesting comment here. 
The Mishnah does not make a comparison between Avram and Bilam. The comparison is by the disciples of Avram and the disciples of Bilam. Interesting. Why, why uh, the Mishnah put the contrast? So uh, there is a one a commentary, which I think has got a lot to say. Sometimes you see a person and he looks to you that he's okay, he's a, even can pretend to be a righteous person. He does all the things you would feel he's doing the right thing. But look at, at his disciples. There you can see the difference. The, the, the more you can learn about the person from the, the, his disciples, then you can see who is a man. And sometimes you can say, uh, maybe you can see from children to learn about the parents. I'm not saying that always it works because sometimes you can have a good and righteous parents and for some reason a child just turn away completely different to them. But most of the cases, a good a teacher will produce enough. If it's a person himself is good, his disciples also will be good, will be good, and vice versa when it comes to Bilam and his disciples. Bilam himself, and here we, he actually was a prophet. And Hashem gave him the power of prophecy. Why? The Gemara says that in order that the Gentiles would not say to God, what do you want from us? We didn't have somebody to teach us, somebody a prophet like the Jews had. So Hashem gave them their leader. He had the power of prophecy. So he wasn't just a simple person. But he was a corrupted person, person. And this is what the Mishnah points out. Ein Ra. Ein Ra is not a good, is not a nice, he's got a bad eye, a bad character. He um, not happy with with uh, with what he has, he actually likes to see that other what others have, he can't he can't forget, he can't see that they should be, and therefore he came to curse the Jewish people. But if you are a good man, why are you going to curse anybody? He is, uh, he was very haughty, Ruach Gvoa, when Balgaive, when Balak sent for him to uh, come and, and curse the Jewish people, he, he gave a, 
hinted that they are not the delegation are not high enough or important enough to get him he needed to have a delegation of more importance this was it was a a bargain nefesh rechava here he was after money and opposite of um, that he was satisfied he got VS he because he said to he hinted to uh, Balak when he wanted him to come and uh, curse Israel he said even if he would give me a house full of silver and gold I couldn't come because God won't let me but what they see he has in mind to have this is what he wished to be to have a lot of uh, money given to him he also was seen to be immoral because he gave according to it's not written specifically but our uh, rabbis interpret it first of all <coughs> he actually had sexual sexual uh, relationship with his donkey number one number two when he wanted to curse Am Israel and Hashem didn't let him. So before he leaves, before he left, he told Balak, I'll give you an advice how to you conquer Am Israel. He send them send them uh, prostitutes that can uh, seduce the Jews for immorality immorality. So this is a corrupted person. What is the difference between a person who got this quality of Abraham? The a person a person that is happy what we have there is happy, is joyful. If a person got the bad uh, qualities then if not happy he's not happy because whatever he saw that he hasn't got another has is uh, miserable and therefore it says they don't have a full life they die Bilam According to Hazal, he died when he was 33. In other words, less than, than, than is usually uh, time for a man to live is 70. He died when he was 33. But I would say more, this, so this was like a punishment. But I would say what we see, if a person is not happy with what he has and always is jealous and want to say what others is, this by himself kills him. It kills him. When a person has got uh, the nefesh rechava like Avram, he a happy person. He's got happy, he has happy in his shell. He's satisfied. And the person that's got like Bilam is frustrated, is unhappy, it kills him when he sees others and he thinks that he should be the one. So this is where, so beside what the Mishnah says, there is a reward, um, a reward which God, God rewards a person 
in this world and in the world to come, I would say that we can understand the punishment and the reward in this world is the person himself. The reward, if he's got the quality of Abraham, is a happy person. Rab, so Rab, we is, just got uh, under two minutes. We finish. This is reward to be happy. You are happy. Ba'olam hazeh, and then you'll be a reward to Olam Abba. If you are unhappy, then you have the punishment unhappy in this world, and you'll give Gehenom in the world to come. So this is the end of the Mishnah. Okay. I hope Thank that you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank, you, Thank you, Rav. Thank you. Thank you, Rav. Thank you, Rav. Well, let you let us be able to emulate, emulate what we're learning to try and apply to our life. Thank you. Have a good Thank, you Rav. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, Rabbi. Thank you. Call to. The Sarotavot. The Sarotavot, yeah.